My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we continue to share together from 1 Kings. Solomon is a builder. You know, the Lord Jesus was called the builder from Nazareth. And then he went on to tell Peter, I will build my church. So Solomon, who is the king, was also a great builder. And the first building that we are told about is the temple. He laid the foundation of that in the 480th year after the children of Israel came out of Egypt. And reading from 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 9. So he built the temple and finished it. And he panelled the temple with beams and boards of cedar. And he built side chambers against the entire temple, each five cubits high. They were attached to the temple with cedar beams. Then the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep all my commandments, and walk in them, then I will perform my word with you, which I spoke to your father David. And I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the temple and finished it. And he built the inside walls of the temple with cedar boards, from the floor of the temple to the ceiling. He panelled the inside with wood, and he covered the floor of the temple with planks of cypress. Then he built the twenty-cubit room at the rear of the temple, from floor to ceiling, with cedar boards. And he built it inside as the inner sanctuary, as the most holy place. And in front of the temple sanctuary was forty cubits long. The inside of the temple was cedar, carved with ornamental buds, and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone to be seen. And he prepared the inner sanctuary inside the temple to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 20 cubits high. He overlaid it with pure gold and overlaid the altar of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the inside of the temple with pure gold. He stretched gold chains across the front of the inner sanctuary and overlaid it with gold. The whole temple was overlaid with gold until he had finished all the temple. Also he overlaid with gold the entire altar that was by the inner sanctuary. Inside the inner sanctuary he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high. One wing of the cherub was five cubits, and the other wing of the cherub was five cubits, ten cubits from tip of one wing to the tip of the other. And the other cherub was ten cubits. Both cherubim were of the same size and shape. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, and so was the other cherub. Then he set the cherubim inside the inner room, and they stretched out the wings of the cherubim so that the wing of one touched one wall, and the wing of the other touched the other wall, and their wings touched each other in the middle of the room. Also he overlaid the cherubim with gold, and he carved all the walls of the temple all around, both the inner and outer sanctuaries, with carved figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. And the floor of the temple he overlaid with gold, both the inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary he made doors of olive wood, and the lintel and the doorposts were one fifth of the wall. The two doors were of olive wood, and he carved on them figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold, and he spread gold on the cherubim and on the palm trees. So for the door of the sanctuary he also made doorposts of olive wood, one-fourth of the wall, and the two doors were of cypress wood. Two panels comprised one folding door, and two panels comprised the other folding door. Then he carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers on them, and overlaid them with gold applied evenly on the carved work. And he built the inner court with 
three rows of hewn stone and a row of cedar beams. In the fourth year, the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid, in the month of Ziv. And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, the house was finished in all its details and according to all its plans. So he was seven years in building it. My name's Arthur, thank you for joining me as we reflect on this temple that Solomon has built. We read from the previous chapter that the main structure was of stone prepared in the quarry and then brought on site and assembled. It seems various sized cubits were used in antiquity, one roughly half a yard, a longer one being half a metre. And so using that measure, the basic structure of the temple was two rooms. One was 20 metres by 10 metres, the holy place, and behind that the most holy place, which was 10 metres square. The building faced east, where there was a porch. And on the outside of the other three walls, there were three tiers of storage rooms built against the outer wall. You didn't get into them from inside the temple, but you accessed them from outside. And above the three tiers, for the whole building is 10 metres high, there were windows around the top to let light in. On the inside of the temple, the stone was overlaid with wood, and that wood was engraved with cherubim, with palm trees and with open flowers. And then it was all overlaid with gold. And as I read that, I am reminded of the Lord Jesus. The whole point of the tabernacle, and now the temple, is to point us to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the temple was a place where you would meet God. Today, there is no temple on earth. There is no place to meet God, but there is a person through whom we meet God, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus is, first of all, described as a stone, the stone the builders rejected. And no doubt there is a story behind that expression. Daniel described the ruler who was to come, the Son of Man, as a stone which crashed into the feet of the image in Nebuchadnezzar's dream and grew to fill the whole earth. When we think of the Lord Jesus, though, we see a man who at first appears to have no special characteristics. He didn't wear royal robes. He didn't have an army and courtiers all around him. As we have mentioned, he was a builder in Nazareth. Then he was a, an itinerant preacher who went about doing good, a rabbi, but he had no wealth with him, except the wisdom of his teaching. And so when you come to the Lord Jesus, you come to the person. You don't just come to get things. But then John says, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of God. The wood in the temple speaks of the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was tested in all points such as we, yet without sin. And yet the wood was overlaid with gold, speaking of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. But from the outside, all you saw was the stone. The plan of the temple was the same as the plan for the tabernacle, but it was twice the size. Where the holy place in the tabernacle was 20 cubits long by 10 cubits wide by 10 cubits high, the holy place in the temple was 20 metres long. 10 metres wide and 10 metres high. And the most holy place, the inner sanctuary, instead of being 10 cubits cube, was 20 cubits cube. And in the inner sanctuary were these two cherubim, indicating that this was the throne room of God. This was the place where God would dwell. And if you were to meet God, you would need to come to this place. The cherubim are the angels that defend God's glory. Today, we don't go to the temple in Jerusalem. It no longer stands, although it will soon be rebuilt for Antichrist. But we do come to the Lord Jesus Christ. For he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.